The Life of Moses on Earth Moses is one of the most significant figures in the Abrahamic religions, revered as a prophet, lawgiver, and leader. His life story, detailed in the Torah, particularly in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, has profoundly influenced Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions. This comprehensive account of Moses' life will cover his birth, early years, call to leadership, the Exodus, receiving the law, and his final days, birth and early years. Birth and Adoption Moses was born in Egypt during a time when the Israelites, descendants of Jacob, were enslaved by the Egyptians. Pharaoh, fearing the growing population of the Israelites, decreed that all newborn Hebrew boys be killed. Moses' mother, Jochebed, defied this order and hid him for three months. When she could no longer keep him hidden, she placed him in a papyrus basket, coated with tar and pitch and set it afloat on the Nile River. Moses' sister, Miriam, watched from a distance. The basket was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter, who, moved by compassion, decided to adopt the child. Miriam approached her and offered to find a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby. Pharaoh's daughter agreed, and Miriam brought her mother, Jochebed, who nursed and cared for Moses until he was old, enough to be brought to Pharaoh's palace, where he was raised as an Egyptian prince. Moses' Early Life in Egypt Moses grew up with the privileges and education of Egyptian royalty. He was likely trained in the arts, sciences, and military tactics of the Egyptians. Despite his royal upbringing, Moses never forgot his Hebrew roots. His sympathy for his people's suffering eventually led to a pivotal moment that changed the course of his life. Sarsar, the call to leadership. Moses' flight to Midian. One day, Moses saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating a Hebrew slave. In a fit of anger, he killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, he tried to intervene in a fight between two Hebrews, but they questioned his authority and revealed that they knew about the murder. Fearing for his life, Moses fled Egypt and settled in the land of Midian, where he married Zipporah, the daughter of Jethro, a priest of Midian, and became a shepherd, the burning bush. Years later, while tending Jethro's flock near Mount Horeb, Sinai, Moses encountered a burning bush that was not consumed by the flames. As he approached, God spoke to him from the bush, instructing him to return to Egypt and lead the Israelites out of bondage. God revealed his name as I am who I am, Yachtwok, and promised to be with Moses. Despite Moses' initial reluctance and objections, including his concern about his speaking ability, God reassured him and appointed his brother Aaron as his spokesman. Shash the Exodus, returned to Egypt. Moses returned to Egypt and, together with Aaron, confronted Pharaoh, demanding the release of the Israelites. Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he refused, leading to a series of ten devastating plagues sent by God. These plagues, which included turning the Nile to blood, swarms of frogs, lice, wild animals, pestilence, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn, demonstrated God's power and ultimately compelled Pharaoh to release the Israelites. The Passover and Departure The final plague, the death of the firstborn, was the most severe. God instructed the Israelites to sacrifice a lamb and mark their doorposts with its blood so that the angel of death would pass over their homes. This event, known as Passover, became a central observance in Jewish tradition. Pharaoh finally relented and allowed the Israelites to leave. The exodus began with Moses leading the people out of Egypt. Crossing the Red Sea As the Israelites journeyed towards the Promised Land, Pharaoh changed his mind and pursued them with his army. Trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's forces, the Israelites despaired. God instructed Moses to stretch out his staff over the sea, and the waters parted, allowing the Israelites to cross on dry ground. When Pharaoh's army attempted to follow, the waters returned and drowned them. This miraculous event demonstrated God's deliverance and power. Chat. Journey to Mount Sinai. The Wilderness Journey. After crossing the Red Sea, the Israelites began their journey through the wilderness. They faced numerous challenges, including a lack of food and water. God provided for them by sending manna, a miraculous bread from heaven, and quail for meat. He also instructed Moses to strike a rock at Horeb, from which water flowed to quench their thirst. During this time, Moses' leadership was continually tested. The Israelites frequently grumbled and rebelled, longing for the comforts of Egypt. Moses interceded with God on their behalf, and God responded with patience and provision. The Battle with Amalek the Israelites faced their first military challenge when the Amalekites attacked them at Rephidim. Moses instructed Joshua to lead the defense while he stood on a hill with the staff of God in his hand. 
As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites prevailed. But when he lowered them, the Amalekites gained the upper hand. Aaron and Hur supported Moses' arms, ensuring victory. This event highlighted the importance of Moses' leadership and God's support in their battles. Shaz receiving the law. Arrival at Mount Sinai. Three months after leaving Egypt, the Israelites arrived at Mount Sinai. God called Moses up the mountain and made a covenant with the Israelites, promising to make them a kingdom of priests and a holy nation if they obeyed his commandments. The people agreed, and Moses consecrated them, preparing them to meet with God. The Ten Commandments. God descended on Mount Sinai in a display of thunder, lightning, and a thick cloud. He spoke to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments, fundamental, laws governing Israel's relationship with God and with each other. These commandments included directives to worship only God, keep the Sabbath, honor one's parents, and prohibitions against murder, adultery, theft, false testimony, and coveting. The Covenant Code and Tabernacle Instructions In addition to the Ten Commandments, God gave Moses detailed laws covering various aspects of life, including social justice, worship, and morality. These laws, known as the Covenant Code, expanded on the principles of the Ten Commandments and provided guidance for building a just and holy society. God also provided instructions for constructing the tabernacle, a portable sanctuary where His presence would dwell among the Israelites. The tabernacle's design included the Ark of the Covenant, which housed the tablets of the Ten Commandments, and various altars and furnishings for worship. Sais, the golden calf and renewal of the covenant. The golden calf. While Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the tablets of the law, the Israelites grew, impatient, and demanded that Aaron make them a god to lead them. Aaron complied and fashioned a golden calf, which the people worshipped with revelry. When Moses descended and saw their idolatry, he was furious and shattered the tablets. He destroyed the calf, rebuked Aaron, and ordered the Levites to execute the ringleaders of the rebellion, resulting in the deaths of about 3,000 men. Renewal of the Covenant Moses interceded with God on behalf of the Israelites, seeking forgiveness for their sin. God forgave them but warned of future consequences. He instructed Moses to carve two new tablets, and once again God inscribed the Ten Commandments on them. Moses spent another 40 days and nights on the mountain, during which he received further instructions and assurances of God's presence. When Moses descended, his face was radiant from his encounter with God, and he covered it with a veil when speaking to the people. The renewed covenant and the re-giving of the law reaffirmed God's commitment to his people despite their failings. Chaiti, the journey to the promised land. Rebellion and wandering. The journey from Sinai to the Promised Land was marked by continued challenges and rebellion. At Kadesh Barnea on the border of Canaan, Moses sent twelve spies to scout the land. Ten of them returned with a pessimistic report, sowing fear and doubt among the Israelites. Only Joshua and Caleb urged faith in God's promise. The people rebelled, expressing a desire to return to Egypt. In response, God decreed that the current generation, except for Joshua and Caleb, would die in the wilderness and the Israelites would wander for 40 years before entering the Promised Land. Korah's Rebellion During the wilderness period, Moses faced further challenges to his leadership. Korah, a Levite, led a rebellion against Moses and Aaron, questioning their authority. God affirmed Moses' leadership by causing the ground to open and swallow Korah and his followers. A subsequent plague killed 14,700 more people, underscoring the seriousness of rebellion against God's appointed leaders. Water from the Rock and the Death of Miriam As the Israelites neared the end of their 40 years of wandering, they arrived at Kadesh again. Here, Miriam, Moses' sister, died and was buried. The people grumbled again about the lack of water, and God instructed Moses to speak to a rock to bring forth water. However, in his frustration, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff. Although water gushed out, God rebuked Moses for not trusting him and told him that he would not enter the Promised Land. Final Acts and Death The Bronze Serpent As the Israelites continued their journey, they faced attacks from the Canaanite king of Arad. After defeating him, they grumbled again about the hardships of the wilderness. In response, God sent venomous snakes among them, causing many to die. The people repented, and God instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. Anyone bitten by a snake could look at the bronze serpent and live. This event became a symbol of God's provision, and later a metaphor for salvation in Christian theology. Balak and Balaam 
As the Israelites camped in the plains of Moab, the Moabite king Balak, fearing their presence, hired the prophet Balaam to curse them. However, God intervened and Balaam could only bless the Israelites. Despite this, the Israelites fell into sin with Moabite women, leading to a plague that killed 24,000 people. Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron, halted the plague by taking decisive action against the perpetrators. Moses' Farewell As the Israelites prepared to enter the Promised Land, Moses delivered a series of farewell speeches. Recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, he reviewed the laws, recounted their history, and urged the people to remain faithful to God. He appointed Joshua as his successor and blessed the tribes of Israel. Death on Mount Nebo? God led Moses to Mount Nebo, from where he could see the Promised Land. Despite his longing to enter it, God reiterated that Moses would not cross over. Moses died there at the age of 120, and God buried him in an unknown grave in the land of Moab. The Israelites mourned him for 30 days. His leadership, faithfulness, and unique relationship with God made him a central figure in their history and faith. Hatch, the legacy of Moses, lawgiver and prophet. Moses' legacy as a lawgiver is unparalleled. The Torah, or Law of Moses, forms the foundation of Jewish religious practice and ethics. His role as a prophet and mediator between God and the people set a standard for future prophets. His life and teachings continue to be studied and revered in Judaism and Christianity. Symbol of faith and leadership. Moses' faith in God, despite his personal struggles and the rebellion of the people, serves as a powerful example of leadership. His intercession for the Israelites, even when they sinned grievously, demonstrated his compassion and dedication. His perseverance through hardship and unwavering commitment to God's mission inspire believers to trust in God's promises and remain steadfast in their faith. Influence on Western civilization. The influence of Moses extends beyond religion. The moral and ethical principles found in the Ten Commandments have shaped Western legal systems and societal values. Concepts of justice, human dignity, and the rule of law can trace their roots to the laws given through Moses. His story has been depicted in art, literature, and film, reflecting its profound impact on culture and history. A foreshadowing of Christ? In Christian theology, Moses is seen as a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Both were deliverers, lawgivers, and mediators of a covenant. Just as Moses led the Israelites out of physical bondage in Egypt, Jesus is believed to lead humanity out of spiritual bondage to sin. The New Testament draws parallels between Moses and Jesus, highlighting the continuity of God's redemptive plan. To our conclusion, Moses' life on earth, spanning from his miraculous birth to his death on Mount Nebo, is a testament to God's faithfulness and the transformative power of faith. As a prophet, lawgiver, and leader, Moses' legacy continues to resonate across religious and cultural boundaries. His story, preserved in sacred texts, remains a source of inspiration guidance, and reflection for millions around the world.